Just a couple of weeks ago, Apple released a brand new feature that has been delayed for a few months, and that is called Universal Control. And what it allows you to do is control your iPad from your MacBook or vice versa if you have your iPad connected to a keyboard and a mouse. What that means is there is also two ways of using both your Mac and your iPad together, and they are sidecar and universal control. They are both similar in roundabout ways, but they are also both very, very different. So how are they different and which should you use if either or either of them of use to you? That's what we're going to have a look at in this video. Let's get into it. Very quickly, just before we go any further, if you are new here to this channel, my name is Scott Edwards. I make all sorts of videography and tech videos. So if they are the sorts of things you are interested in, consider clicking that little subscribe button that's just down below there and come and be a part of this community. So let's just get straight into it and we'll start with Sidecar. Now Sidecar was first released a couple of years ago back with Mac OS Catalina. And what it allows you to do is use your iPad as extra screen space for your MacBook. So it's just like using an external monitor, however, completely wireless. So what that means is if you need extra screen space when you're working on your MacBook, because maybe you've got loads of different windows open, you can send any window you want over to your iPad. All you have to do is at the top, click window and scroll down to move to iPad. And then automatically your Mac will connect to your iPad and you can drag windows across the two. You can then also interact with your iPad like you would an external monitor. So you can use your mouse to scroll through things on your iPad. You can use your keyboard to type into things. So maybe you're working on a document over on your iPad while you've got things open over on your MacBook. And it just allows you to interact with it as you would a normal external monitor. It is actually a really great feature and I sometimes think that it doesn't get the credit or the attention that it deserves because it is incredibly useful. For example, if you're out and about working in a coffee shop, if anyone still does do that nowadays in 2022 with COVID around, but if you are working in a coffee shop and you need extra screen space because you're working on a small MacBook Pro or an MacBook Air with a 13 inch, 14 inch display, you might need a bit of extra screen space. Drag out your iPad from your bag, connect the two, and you've got almost double the amount of screen space. So while you're inside car as well, you can also use the Apple Pencil to interact. So you can scroll through pages, you can tap on things to click on links, and you also get the touch tabs down the side as well, and the touch things at the bottom. So you can, in a way, interact with things with a touch screen. You do need to use the pencil though, it won't work with your finger like an iPad normally will do. The problem with Sidecar though, is when you are using it, you lose functionality of your iPad as an iPad, because all it is, is an extension of the display of your MacBook. So if you want to use your iPad as an iPad, you have to quit Sidecar and then go about using your iPad as you would and then reconnect to be able to use Sidecar again, which can be a little bit of a faff if you are, for example, working on things on your iPad, maybe it's a bit of graphic design in Procreate or something like that, and you also want the extra screen space, you're not gonna be able to do both of those things. And that is where universal control comes in. Now this is still only in beta. It has been delayed for a long time, but it was due to come with Mac OS Monterey when that was first released. We are starting to see what universal control is capable of now that it is available as a beta. But what this allows you to do is different from Sidecar because you still get all the functionality of your iPad. And there is literally no setting up that you need to do at all. All you have to do is place your MacBook next to your iPad like that and drag the mouse across and you'll start to see a little mouse dragging onto the screen and then you drag it through and then you can interact with your iPad like you would an iPad with an external mouse and keyboard. It is that easy to be able to connect the two. There's nothing you have to be able to do. It works absolutely brilliantly. There is no lag whatsoever, which I thought there would have been, being as it's all wireless and over Bluetooth and they're interacting as two separate devices. I thought there would be bits of lag and it wouldn't work particularly well. However, Apple 
have worked their magic with this because it is absolutely brilliant. Now I have made a full video about universal controls, so if you want to go and check that out, I will link it up there if you'd like to go and see how you can use it and what you can do with it. But effectively what it allows you to do is use your iPad as an iPad from your MacBook keyboard and mouse and you can drag things over from your iPad as well. For example, if you have been working on a thumbnail for YouTube in Procreate, you can grab that from inside the Procreate app and drag it over to your MacBook and it is there instantly. You used to have to use AirDrop. Now AirDrop is incredible. I still use AirDrop now. It is one of my favorite features that Apple have ever released. I love AirDrop so much. AirDrop is quick. But what this means is it's even quicker because you're interacting with the two in real time. Absolutely mind blowing how this works. The amount of time and effort and algorithms that must have gone into creating this just blows my mind. I don't think I'll ever understand how things like this work, but it is such a useful feature and I've used it a hell of a lot. Even when I'm just editing videos. I can be connected to my iPad and work on little graphics on my iPad and then drag them over straight into a Final Cut Pro timeline, which just saves so much time and it works so well. So both Sidecar and Universal Control are incredible features that are both very useful in their own different ways. For example, Sidecar, if you just need extra screen space for your MacBook, that is very, very useful because you can just drag things over onto there and have more space on your MacBook. If you want to interact with each device as its own each device, universal control is absolutely mind blowing. And I think there are so many ways that everyone will find ways of working both of these features into their own workflows. So even though both features are fairly similar in the fact that they involve your Mac and your iPad, they are also incredibly different because they allow you to do so many different things that a few years ago we wouldn't have even dreamed of because these devices were very much standalone devices. However, now they are starting to interact with each other a little bit more and I think it's a bit of an exciting glimpse into the future as to what Apple are planning. I also potentially think this is why we won't ever see a touchscreen MacBook. Just my personal view. I think if we were to see a touchscreen MacBook, people would sway away from buying an iPad. They'd forget about the iPad and go to a MacBook Touch, whatever you want to call it. However, what you also then lose is the functionality of an iPad, just being able to have it on your lap. Using a touchscreen laptop isn't very ergonomic. This works so well, being able to use both devices together as one as an iPad, as an extension to your MacBook, incredible, incredible, I love it. And I do genuinely think that we're gonna start seeing a lot more of this from Apple in the future, just making all the devices work so well together. And they already do work very well together through iCloud and all of that stuff. So yeah, it's very exciting as to what is gonna come from Apple in the future with regards to stuff like this, I think. Let me know what you think about these features down in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and click subscribe, and I shall see you all very soon in another video. I'm gonna try and go straight through without stopping and redoing bits today because that's really frustrating me at the moment when I'm making my videos. As I keep stopping and redoing whole chunks, but today I'm going to try and be a new me.